As you recall, in past installments, we established that the given name of the woman who called herself Sister Charlotte was Rhoda Edna Clacker. Throughout the years, her family used variant spellings of the last name as Clacker, Clacker, or Clecker. As you further recall, according to Sister Charlotte's fraudulent testimony, she entered a convent in January of 1911, and she claimed that she was imprisoned in a dungeon in a convent and she claimed that she didn't leave until she escaped in 1935. However, in my past videos, I established beyond any shadow of the doubt that most of that time she was living with her family in Kansas, and her testimony was completely fabricated. Much of the information that I provided was obtained through the website newspapers.com. Since my last installment, that website has added to its database, and now we have more information available about the life of the real Sister Charlotte. Though Sister Charlotte claimed to have entered into a convent in 1911 and had stayed there for many years, we see from this newspaper clipping in October 1915 that she was still living with her parents in Hiawatha, Kansas. From this clipping, we see that in January of 1916, five years after she claimed that she had entered into a convent, she was still living with her parents in Hiawatha, Kansas. And we see here that in September of 1919, instead of being a good and pious nun, she was busy being a socialite, entertaining out-of-town guests. In September of 1920, we learned that Sister Charlotte was planning to go to Kansas City to take a nurse's training course at Research Hospital in Kansas City. Here's a photo of Research Medical Center in Kansas City as it looks nowadays. Now here's another clipping from nine years later. In September of 1929, she was again entering Research Hospital to learn to be a trained nurse. It's unclear whether or not she quit the first time and then returned to restart her studies. What we do know is that in her phony testimony, Sister Charlotte claimed to have earned her nursing degree at a Catholic hospital. Research Medical Center is definitely not a Catholic hospital. So this is just one more of Sister Charlotte's many deceptions. Here's an interesting clipping. In June of 1922, Sister Charlotte's sister, Bessie, was married in a Baptist church. As you recall, Sister Charlotte claimed that her entire family is Catholic. In past videos, I showed that, that, unfortunately for them, nobody in her family was ever Catholic, and this clipping is even more proof. Here's a clipping that tells us that in September of 1924, Sister Charlotte attended a meeting of the Leisure Club. Since we know that she was never drawn to honest work, it seems to make sense that she would enjoy a club devoted solely to leisure. Here's a clipping from March of 1925 that tells us that Sister Charlotte traveled to Marysville, Kansas to attend a dedication of an evangelical church. Such a thing would have been a mortal sin for a Catholic under the Code of Canon Law of 1917. So again, Sister Charlotte, who was allegedly in a convent at that time, was busy doing many un-Catholic activities. Here's an extremely interesting clipping. It shows that on March 25th of 1926, Sister Charlotte seemed to have been part of the leadership in the Epworth League. So what is the Epworth League? Well, it's a Methodist young adult league for people up to 35 years old. Please note that this meeting of the Epworth League was at a Methodist parsonage. So it seems extremely likely that in 1926, Sister Charlotte was not yet a Seventh-day Adventist, certainly wasn't a Catholic, but she was a Methodist. However, it also seems that she was indifferent to different religions since she had also attended the dedication of an evangelical church. Since my last video on Sister Charlotte, I learned that Sister Charlotte moved to the Quad Cities of Moline, Iowa and Rock Island, Illinois sometime after 1926. She rented different apartments there. Perhaps she moved to the Quad Cities because she had family there. As you recall, her grandmother had lived there and her Protestant uncle John also lived in Rock Island until he died in 1936. We know that Sister Charlotte lived in Rock Island during the 1940 census. Was Sister Charlotte an irresponsible driver? Well, here's a clipping from April of 1935 in the Moline Dispatch, and it says that she collided with an automobile driven by Charles Nelson. Then on September of 1937, Sister Charlotte was involved in a collision that involved heavy damage to the two automobiles involved. The driver of the other vehicle incurred a fracture of the collarbone, head injuries, and cuts to the face. 
Then, in November of 1937, Sister Charlotte was fined a dollar for illegal parking. One dollar in 1937 is the equivalent to $17.50 nowadays when you figure inflation. Sister Charlotte was engaged to be married, so here's another extremely interesting clipping. In May of 1937, Sister Charlotte and Albert Schlichting of Wisconsin obtained a marriage license. There's no evidence that they ever got married. In a way, it's a shame because if they had, maybe Sister Charlotte would have settled down and not become a grifter. Though Albert Schlichting is not a common name, there are a couple of Albert Schlichtings, so it might have been this guy who ended up in Iowa. It seems that he died in 1982. From this clipping, it appears that he ended up marrying somebody else. Or it might have been this Albert Schlichter, who ended up living in Reno, Nevada. This Albert Schlichting seems to have been a Lutheran. Sister Charlotte was a criminal. Here's a clipping from April 19th of 1941. It tells us that Sister Charlotte was arrested on a charge of obtaining goods by a false pretense from a florist in Davenport, Iowa. Davenport's one of the Quad Cities. Now I'm sure some Seventh-day Adventists who are watching are thinking, oh, I'm sure that it was just a misunderstanding. Well, here's a clipping from April 29th of 1941. It says that Sister Charlotte pled guilty to the charge of obtaining property by illegal means. It says that Sister Charlotte who is now 40 years old, was sentenced to serve 90 days in the Rock Island County Jail. Sister Charlotte pled guilty to having obtained flowers valued at $5.25. When you factor in inflation, that would be about $90 nowadays. Sister Charlotte was scamming people in 1941, but she continued doing it over the next few decades. Though her fraudulent testimony was full of fabrication and lies, at least she was truthful about having been imprisoned. The difference is that it wasn't in a dungeon in some convent. It was in the Rock Island County Jail. Well, I hope you enjoyed this installment. We'll be back again in about a week with another one. But in the meantime, please check out my Facebook page, which is linked down below. Every day I feature additional content that you won't find on this YouTube channel. Please check out the Ascent of Mount Carmel group, which is a Facebook group devoted to the study of mystical theology. And finally, please pray for the church. On and on and on, I was filled with bitterness and hatred.